What's going on everyone? Hope you're having a good day. So, we are in a Tundra. We're just not in my Tundra today. This is my father's 2018. We haven't done a video on it in a while, so I figured we would do a little catch up on this truck. Now my father uh, uses this truck for, you know, going fishing. He's on the beach with it all the time. If I pan around, I could show you all the sand everywhere. Uh, it's got 12,000 miles on it. And the reason he bought this Tundra, other than the fact that I have a Tundra YouTube channel, thank you, Dad, uh, was the fact that he had a boat to tow. Um, and he's had boats for quite a while. And, you know, the boat was quite large, so he needed a half ton. This is his second half ton truck. He had a Ram 1500 before this one. Uh, so he got rid of that boat and he got a smaller boat. So once, this is actually a lease, so once this lease is up, he probably will go back down to a Tacoma because a Tacoma can easily handle the boat he's got now. But anyway, let's talk about this real quick. We'll take it for a quick ride. See what it feels like to drive a Tundra without a supercharger, which I haven't done in a while. But right here, this is a 2018 limited Tundra double cab. 4x4. It does not have the TRD off-road package. Um, 2018 was the first year of Toyota Safety Sense. He hasn't really had any issues with that. There was a recall with something with the sensor up front, but there was no issue with it. They took care of it. No big deal. The one problem he's had with this truck, um, he's had some rusting, something with the TPMS sensor, on three out of the four tires. Uh, so he brings it in and they fix it under warranty, but that's been the one issue he's had. Uh, rust, like I said, is a is a big deal in this part of the country. All the road salt, northeast, ocean down the street, all that stuff. We talk about it all the time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the camera off the windshield real quick, and we're going to pan around the truck, and I'm going to show you what they offer in the 2018 Limited, which is pretty much the same thing in the 19 and 20 as well. So like I said, 2018 was the first year of the Toyota Safety Sense in the Tundras. You also got a new gauge cluster. You got a little screen in the middle that gives you a lot more options than the old one like I have on the 2017. So that's pretty cool. I like the layout of this, but I I also like the layout of the 14 to 17. Um, really not that big of a difference, but I do like this one a little bit more, I think. Uh, what you get when you get a limited is you actually get all of the climate control um, the digital layout, dual climate control, I should say. You get heated seats down here. Like I said, this is a double cab. So one of my things is this back window right here. You don't get the full size like the Crew Max, but that is automatic, so that's cool. Because in the SR5, at least in America, I'm not sure in Canada, uh, you have to reach back there and open it yourself, and it's very hard to reach, um, you know, obviously in a big half-ton truck like this. You get that simulated wood grain here that they've actually... they made it a little dark for 2018 and up. Uh, this used to be like a, a serious wood grain. 1794 still has a, a wood grain look like that. You get these leather seats, same thing you get in the TRD Pro Tundra quite comfortable uh, stiff leather very good very durable leather versus the platinum or the 1794 platinum and 1794 are perforated uh, this could take a beating and like I said my father does a lot of fishing as you can see there's sand everywhere he does a lot of fishing he does a lot of uh, you know on the beach type thing uh, with his truck so he needs these seats you know I don't think the 1794 the platinum perforated seats would be good for him like i said the truck sees a lot of work um but yeah overall a nice truck you know double cab seats we talk about all the time the golf bag back there of course and fishing gear over here uh, but we talk about this all the time you could easily fit adults back here i had four double cabs it's not that big of a deal it's not that big of an issue uh, maybe if you're traveling to disney world from new jersey you don't want to do that but you know not that big of a deal and plenty space for storage and I believe it was 2016 and up. They actually come with the storage box now. But if you don't have one, they're available. I got to do this. Sparks Parts, Tundra Dew 34 promo code, save you 5%. So what we'll do is I'm going to take you outside. It's super, super windy. We're going to take a quick walk around the truck. I'm going to show you what's up. If it doesn't work out and you don't see a video and you see pictures right now, that's because when I went back and looked at the video, it was just too windy and you couldn't hear me. So let's check out the outside of the truck real quick. All right, like I said, pardon the wind. There is a lot of it. 2018 they upgraded the grill on the limited i like it a lot more it still has a lot of chrome but it looks a lot better 2018 you got the led headlights i have these led headlights on my tundra also led fog lights mine are from the trd sport they have a little bit of more of a black background in them never really was a fan of the limited wheels but they are 20 inch and they get the job done on the beach matte gray in color chrome 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 we could have took care of all that, but he actually likes Chrome, so we left it alone. Now, here is the comment below question of the day. What do you think of the look of the double cab? I've been reading this a lot on the, the Facebook, you know, Tundra Crew and All Out Tundra, that people are not a fan of the look of the double cab. Tell me what you think. As we move on, it has the stock exhaust. At one point, it had a BA muffler exhaust. He went back to stock, but listen to this. Still sounds very good for a stock exhaust. Never put a bed liner in, but we got the bed mat. This came with it. It's done the job. Um, nothing seems to be beat up on the sides here. Yep, so obviously you got parking sensors, blind spot monitoring. 
not a bad looking truck and these are always these have always been a favorite of mine uh, these steps that come on toyota it's running boards i dig them they are available if you don't have them very easy install as well obviously 5.7 liters so let's take this thing for a quick ride all right we're going to take the 2018 on a little ride like i said i haven't driven a tundra that doesn't have a supercharger in a long time so let's see how it feels obviously there'll be some difference but i want to see where the difference is i always felt like the double cab was a little bit faster uh just just the way the truck feels is a little bit different it's not insanely different but different enough to uh call it out for sure and people say this and i never understood this they say that the tundra versus the other half tons out there doesn't feel like it's a powerful truck at all when it comes to just driving it every day um, they feel like it it lacks in power it's kind of sluggish the term sluggish has been used before i don't feel that i mean i didn't buy this to be a ferrari or he didn't buy this to be a ferrari but it's not a bad truck it doesn't feel like it's it's holding you back there has definitely been some vehicles that i've driven that feel like they extremely lack power one of those i had a 2002 tacoma two-wheel drive four-cylinder truck that thing felt like it needed a little bit of love you came out of the uh like the toll booths in new jersey everything is a toll uh came out of the toll booths and it was crazy you had to really get out of other people's way but this feels fine i mean there's definitely a difference when it comes to supercharger versus non-supercharger in a tundra but it doesn't lack to the point where I'd be disappointed in driving this every day. Gets up to speed nice, sounds good. Um, a lot less noise than the Platinum, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I dig it. I like it a lot. Overall, if you're in the market for a Tundra, people ask me, the, do I buy a Crew Max? Do I buy a double cab? What trim do I buy? All that. Everybody's different out there. You got to go. You got to test drive. That's the, the secret of the pros right there. You got to test drive. Go be annoying to the dealer. Go ask to sit in every single truck you want. Listen, you're about to spend $50,000 or so on a truck. Take your time. If you don't need a crew max, get the double cab. Like I said, this could do the job. If you're going to have adults in your in your back seat every once in a while or for local traveling, go double cab. Save the money. You'll save a few thousand dollars that way. Um, but if you're going to have you know your family in the, the vehicle all the time, you're going on trips and all that, maybe you want to go crew max. Are you a worker? Do you use the bed a lot? This is a five and a half, or excuse me, this is a six and a half foot bed. Crew Max is five and a half foot bed. Everybody wants the six and a half bed on the Crew Max. Hopefully one day we get that. But overall, this is a sweet truck. I like it. When it comes to trims, I like what they did here in the Limited. You get a few more extra things. You get the leather. Uh, you get the climate control, dual climate control, where you can literally put in the temperature, exact temperature you want. You get the heated seats. I mean, you get everything you need. It's a little bit more than the SR5. I don't remember what this truck went for, but I'm going to say it was around forty-three dollars to $44,000 at the time. So let me know what you think. Um, so we got some questions. Like I said, comment below. Do you like the look of the double cab? Would you go double cab or crew max? A lot of questions for a lot of comments. But let me know. Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, at TundraDude34. TundraDude34 at gmail.com. You guys have a great day.